Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, and our hearts sing, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is May the 18th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text is going to be taken out of Romans chapter 1 and verse 18, 19, and 20. So let's read together. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, if you'll bear with me, I want to read that to you out of the Message Bible. So let's read together. But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate as people try to put a shroud over truth. But the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes, and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. Eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. So nobody has a good excuse. What happened was this. People knew God perfectly well. But when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. They pretended to know it all, but were illiterate regarding life. They traded the glory of God who holds the whole world in his hands for cheap figurines you can buy at any roadside stand. Now, friends, that is plain truth. And what you're going to find today as we look deeper into the book of Enoch is that these men's minds, as they wrote these words, yes, they were inspired by God, no doubt about it. But they were also inspired by the things that they read. I mean, think about it. Today, we have the New Testament and the Old Testament. But in New Testament times, they didn't have the New Testament. All they had was the Old Testament. And in Old Testament times, they didn't have the Old Testament. All they had were the writings of Enoch, the writings of Jubilees, and other writings that had been handed down. God has always preserved his word for his creation. It's always been here. And so as we read from the book of Enoch today, you're going to see very clearly that these men were influenced by these early writings. Just like if you and I were to write a paper today, we would be influenced by the Bible. Let's say we were writing a thesis on the universe. Much of what we have to say would come from what we know of the Bible, because what we know of the Bible is what we know of God. Well, it was the same in their time. They didn't have the New Testament to fall to. They didn't have the Old Testament to fall to. The book of Enoch was written before the writings of Moses, and the law was given to Moses. So hopefully you have copied the link that I pasted yesterday. If you haven't, I will put it on the video again today, and I would encourage you to read along with us. Today we're going to cover chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5, and don't be worried because chapter 3, for instance, is only one verse. These are very short chapters, but they all correlate with the same idea, so we wouldn't be doing it a service if we were to break them apart. So hopefully, again, you, you have the page in front of you and you can read along with us. So let's read together chapter 2 in the book of Enoch. Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. Behold ye the earth. And give heed to the things which take place upon it from first to last. How steadfast they are. How none of the things upon earth change. But all the works of God appear to you. Behold the summer and the winter. How the whole earth is filled with water. And clouds and dew and rain lie upon it. Chapter 3. And notice here, what we're being told is just to look outside. And you'll see God everywhere in space, in the earth, in the seasons, 
in the plants, in the animals. The existence of God is proven to us by what we see when we merely open our eyes. Okay, well, back to Enoch chapter 3. Observe and see how in the winter all the trees seem as though they had withered and shed all their leaves except 14 trees, which do not lose their foliage but retain the old foliage from two to three years till the new comes. Chapter 4. And again, observe ye the days of summer, how the sun is above, earth over against it. And you seek shade and shelter by the reason of the heat of the sun. And the earth also burns with growing heat. And so you cannot tread on the earth or on a rock by reason of its heat. Chapter 5. Observe ye how the trees cover themselves with green leaves and bear fruit. Wherefore, give ye heed and know with regard to all his works, and recognize how he that liveth forever hath made them so. And all his works go on thus from year to year forever, and all the tasks which they accomplish for him, and their tasks change not. But according as God hath ordained, so it is done. And behold how the sea and the rivers in like manner accomplish and change not their tasks from his commandments. But ye, ye have not been steadfast, nor done the commandments of the Lord. But you have turned away and spoken proud and hard words with your impure mouths against his greatness. Now there's a shift here. And basically what he's saying is everything in the world is doing exactly what it was created to do, except for man. Man is the only one that is defying God. Think about it. All the plants are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. All the animals, all the insects, everything in space, the waters, the rains, the seasons, everything is performing according to its own purpose. But man in his defiance, his rebellion, and his stupidity shakes his fist in the face of God and says, I can do it on my own. What a stupid statement that is. And I lived in that stupidity for a long time, friends. So I'm not pointing the finger at you as much as I'm pointing the finger back at myself. Let's carry on in, in chapter 5. O ye hard-hearted, you shall find no peace. Therefore shall you execrate your days. Now that word execrate there means loathe. You will loathe your days. You will despise your days on earth. And the years of your life will perish. The years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal execration, in eternal hate. Hate, loathe, despise, all kind of the same word. But here it is meant as hate. The years of your destruction shall be multiplied in eternal hate, and you will find no mercy. So you will spend your days as the enemy of God from now to eternity as long as you shake your fist in his face and defy him. In those days you will make your names an eternal execration unto all the righteous. Again, you will be a curse to the righteous. And by you shall all who curse, curse. And all the sinners and godless shall imprecate by you. And this again simply means to invoke evil or to curse. So all the sinners and godless shall curse by you. And for you the godless there shall be a curse. And all the shall rejoice. Now, that word is missing. And all the shall rejoice. Because you defied God, now God is going to defy you. And all the shall rejoice. What could have been in there? Could it have been all the angels shall rejoice? All the righteous shall rejoice? And there shall be forgiveness of sins and every mercy and peace and forbearance. There shall be salvation unto them a good light. Well, who is the good light? Jesus, the light of the world. His name means salvation. So when Mary called him, she said, salvation, come here. And so Enoch is telling here just a couple of hundred years after creation that as said in, in Genesis chapter 315, which we looked at a couple of days ago, the promise of a, a coming one, a Messiah, a savior, he's coming. And look what it says, and for all you sinners, there shall be no salvation. 
Now, you know, there's this idea that you can live your entire life and then on your deathbed, you can receive Christ. You know, the Bible doesn't say that. Look at Hosea chapter four and verse eight. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You've heard that before. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject thee. That you've probably never heard before. You rejected, I offered you my hand of mercy. In your whole life, you rejected me. Now I will reject you. And you will be no priest to me. Seeing you have forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Look at Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24 says, Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have said it not, all of my counsel, and you would have none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Then they will seek me early, but they shall not find me. Friend, it's very clear. There's no such thing as a deathbed confession according to the Bible. And so that's what we're being told here in Enoch. For all you sinners, there shall be no salvation. But on you shall abide a curse. But for the elect, the chosen, there shall be light and joy and peace. And they shall inherit the earth. Well, doesn't that sound like what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5? The meek shall inherit the earth. He says, you will inherit the earth. Then there shall be bestowed upon the elect, the chosen, wisdom. And they shall all live and never again sin, either through ungodliness or or through pride. But they who are wise shall be humble, and they shall not again transgress, nor shall they sin all the days of their lives. In other words, you've made a commitment to God. You signed a contract. You've made a vow. You better do your best to keep it. Nor shall they sin all the days of their life, nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath, but they shall complete the number of the days of their life. Now, the way it says that, it means that we may not complete the numbered days of our lives. If we don't live faithfully and according and true to God, then he could shorten our days. And their lives shall be increased in peace. And the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their lives. Friends, these are comforting words. And so the message is this. God is all around us. And all we have to do is stop from the busyness of this life, be still and know that he is God. And rather than focusing on all the problems of this world, we should stop and count our blessings because they are many and vast friends. And we don't deserve one single one of them. And yet he rains them upon us day after day after day. What thrilling and delightful words these are to begin our day with as we put our mind upon the things of God and we refuse to look upon the things of this world. That's the lifestyle of holiness, friends. That's what the Bible calls us to. That's what the book of Enoch is calling us to. And that surely is what the Most High and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is calling us to. Amen. Well, friends, I love you. I pray for you. That brings us to the end of our study today. Tomorrow we'll pick up in Enoch chapter 6 where it's going to get really busy, really quick because we're going to discuss the fallen ones. And although we have been taught by Christian tradition that all of our sin is to be blamed upon Adam and Eve, you're going to discover for yourself that that's not necessarily true. That may be where it began but the angels, the fallen angels, are the ones that taught men so many evil things. And it is because of them that we suffer so greatly today. And so I pray that you were blessed today. And if you want another dose of spiritual blessing, please be back with us tomorrow. Also, we have over 200 videos on our YouTube site, Haya Kadosh Ministries. If you get a chance and you want more, please visit us for I know that you will truly be blessed. Now, friends, may your eyes be enlightened and open to the things of God today. May your journey be blessed. May your heart be full of praise. And may there be a song on your lips. 
because the God of all creation knows you by name and cares for you very much. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.